Welcome to the International Tax Post uh, video segment. We're in uh, Hong Kong, a very warm late summer day, and we're very fortunate to have with us Philip Markovici. Uh, Philip is a Baker McKenzie partner, one of the founders of Baker McKenzie's wealth management practice. Now, uh, in the news lately, I think everybody's seen um, quite a lot about exchange of information, uh, trying to you know, flush out uh, undeclared money. Uh, most recently, we've seen the UK and Liechtenstein uh, announcing a new kind of agreement. Uh, and I understand you were uh, kind of an architect of that agreement. So tell us about that. Well, it's a very interesting thing. And uh, in my view, something that is very groundbreaking and really only came to pass through uh, a number of people being involved and working very hard to put something in place that had just simply never been done before. And in particular, the Liechtenstein government, uh, the people within the Liechtenstein government working on the transaction and a number of other advisors all work together on something that uh, I believe can really have a big impact uh, and provide a win-win-win result for governments, for financial centers, and most importantly for the wealth-owning families who are affected by the way the world is changing. What's in it? I mean, what's in it for Liechtenstein's banks, for example, and what's in it for the for the clients? I mean, I can, we can see what's in it for the UK. They're going to get taxed. Well, well, I think Jeff, I, the, the, I would have to go back and say that uh, what's happening, what we're reading about in the newspapers in terms of OECD standards and countries uh, agreeing to adopt OECD standards on exchange of information, is a very positive step, and it's remarkable how quickly things have changed since pressure from the G20. Yeah and um, events in and around the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it's important to understand that OECD standards of exchange of information have their limits. And the limit basically is that it's information exchange on request. Unless a government has reason to make the request for the information, it really doesn't address the issue of undeclared money. The approach that we've put in place and that the UK and Liechtenstein have agreed to is an approach that involves Liechtenstein making a commitment to the UK that within an agreed period of time, there simply will not be any undeclared clients in Liechtenstein who have UK tax obligations. That's the general principle behind it. Now, for such a commitment that Liechtenstein has made, which no country has ever made before, Liechtenstein worked very hard to ensure that everything it was doing was in the interests of the clients that it serves. So what Liechtenstein did and agreed with the United Kingdom was an arrangement under which anyone who has tax issues that they need to regularize with the UK tax authorities can do so in a very favorable way if they have the requisite connection to Liechtenstein. Associated with all of this are a number of protections for the wealth-owning family to give them the opportunity to take time to think about what really is in the best interest of the family. Um, it's an agreement with a lot of elements to it, but one that I'm quite confident is going to prove to be something that really is successful for all the parties involved. Okay, so the benefit, I guess, is more lenient treatment than <clears throat> would otherwise be the case if they were attempting to, continuing to attempt to evade and might face penalties or prison in the future. Many countries around the world are offering what are known as voluntary disclosure procedures, including the United Kingdom itself with something known as their new disclosure opportunity. But the arrangement with Liechtenstein is a separate arrangement, and it's designed to be particularly attractive. And in effect, it's designed to allow Liechtenstein to benefit, and for its financial uh, services industry to benefit, by connecting with wealth-owning families, being in a position to really talk to them about what is really in the best interest of those families. And very importantly, it's designed so that people who do not have a connection with Liechtenstein at present will be able to establish that kind of connection over the period of this arrangement and take advantage of this. I see. So people, so if I had a bank account in Switzerland, I might, and I was a UK taxpayer who was not up to speed or regularized, I might actually want to move my money into Liechtenstein first and then disclose to the UK government? Precisely that. But the way it's designed, you may not have to actually move your money to Liechtenstein. It may be sufficient for you to create a foundation or to establish a relationship with a Liechtenstein financial uh, services intermediary okay. in some way. And that will then allow you to take advantage of this facility in relation to the assets that may still be sitting in Switzerland. One of the ideas behind all of this is to 
influence other countries to consider whether this kind of approach might make sense to them. And if countries begin to see that clients that they have are establishing connections with Liechtenstein, benefiting financially the Liechtenstein Financial Center, other countries may move in the same direction. And if we see that, we see a real solution to the issue of undeclared money with a commitment from countries to cooperate. Mm. The whole concept is really that countries that have bank secrecy have to be part of the solution in relation to undeclared money. And financial institutions that are involved in trust services and wealth management also need to be part of the solution. Only working together in the best interest of the wealth owning family mm. do we really come to the right place we want to be. So it's almost creating a competition between the money centers, the low tax money centers, to disclose rather than to not disclose, which has been the case in the past. Well, it all sounds very easy, but as you can imagine, there is a lot of resistance to the concept because mm. it is a concept that puts a date by which there will simply be no more undeclared money. Whether other countries jump to do it the way you're suggesting, we'll see. Well, let's turn to the more general OECD effort against tax havens. Today's Herald Tribune, I know, had a letter from the Secretary General of the OECD, Angel Guria, saying no more tax havens. And he refers to this upcoming meeting in Mexico, the Global Tax Forum, 70 countries plus the World Bank and other international organizations with some suggestive comments about a, uh, a groundbreaking plan involving peer review that will basically eliminate tax havens in, at some point in the future. What do you think that's all about? Well, I don't have any detail about what, uh, what you've mentioned, but I can imagine that it's the next step to what we've seen over the past months in relation to the efforts that the OECD has made successfully to get many financial centers, if not all, almost all around the world, to agree to OECD standards. Of course, these financial centers have been moving very quickly now to engage in either tax information exchange agreements or full tax conventions with exchange of information provisions. The uh, goal for many of them being to get off the OECD gray list and right. to go on to the white list by having 12 such agreements. It would make sense that the next step is to ensure that there is substance behind what these countries have said that they will do. Right. And it's not enough to just sign an information exchange agreement. Right. You have to begin to actually exchange that information. And what kind of sanctions do you foresee for countries that don't live up to their commitment? Well, I don't anticipate that the sanctions would come from the OECD itself, obviously. No, they, they, would be, the power. they would be sanctions on a bilateral basis, uh, in most cases, between countries. And the kind of sanctions that are very easy and have already been talked about by a number of countries are putting uh, a number of rules in place that would actually affect people's choices, both businesses and individuals, in terms of use of that financial center by denying tax deductions, for example, mm -hmm. uh, in relation to payments to that financial center, putting in place special controlled foreign corporation regimes relating to use of those centers. Yeah. There are a number of techniques countries can use if they really want to address this issue.